Greetings, greetings, everybody. This is Real Talk, episode number, what are we, 24? Yeah, 24. Here's to you. Hope you're all having a great evening so far. Hopefully, we'll be joined this evening by Above the Tie. That is Mariah and Matt. And hello, big dude, Barbus. Good to see you this evening. Hello, Kim. Good to see you as well. Magic Mike, good to see you. Hello, hello. Hope you're all doing great. Hello, sir. Rod, A's back, above the tie. Let's go ahead and send a request <clears throat> for above the tie, and then we shall get into it. Stand by. Hey, Rod. Sweet baby Ray, how you doing? Hello, One Pass Ben. Hey, Hi. how are we doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing well. Presumably we have Mariah and Matt, is that correct? Yes. From above the tie, yes? Tell the folks, let me make sure I can hear you. Say something, make sure I can hear you. Hello, can you hear us? Oh, okay? yes, I can hear you well. You all can hear them, I hope? Mm-hmm. Let me know if you can. Hello, Superman CB, CDB, <laughs> the Barbus guy says. Anyway, we'll, we'll get right into it. Um, we have Matt and Mariah from above the tie. Um, first, I got to ask, what's going on with Stan? Everybody knows Stan for many, many, many years. What is Stan up to in his retirement? Well, um, he's doing great. Him and mom are both retired. Uh, they are currently keeping our kids for us tonight so we can do the interview and they're not running crazy in the background. <laughs> um, he's, I think his most recent purchase that he's been excited about is a riding lawnmower. Oh, yeah, that that sounds like retirement work right there, for sure. It's in the big town now. Uh, well, the, yeah, right. So how was that transition from Stan to you all? Um, what? How did you decide to do this? You wanted to keep the family business. Uh, but was there any thought about not doing it? Um, well, I, me and Stan started the business together, so I've always kind of okay. been. Um, I... I know he had spoke in the past of our kids, perhaps one day running the business. So I think that's the long-term goal, just to keep it going. So it was always uh, designed to be a long-term family business, as far as you all were concerned, right? Yep. Well, yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad to hear that. What What ha- have been some of the challenges since uh, Stan retired? And of course, if you've been involved all along, you've, 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 I'm sure, had a lot of influence over the company. But myself, I've always dealt with Stan. So um, any challenges oh. in that? transition that was by design i'd prefer to stay behind the scenes uh you know to my own detriment but um you know stan was comfortable being the face of the company and and um that was a great way to go when he stepped down there was obviously a big hole uh that needed to be filled so um the the biggest hurdle was just getting organized um after stan stepped down and then um He's being very modest. He ran the company by himself for about, what, a year? Two. Two years by himself. His mom helped pack orders. Uh, Lisa helped pack orders and a day stuff. Or two a, week. a day or two a week. And But Matt did the ordering, the emails, the polishing, the yep. the website stuff. So he was, he was very busy. <laughs> um, so it was hard to kind of put yourself out there like Stan was trying to do and, and do the YouTube thing. Uh, but we're making effort move that direction now so gotcha so let's talk about something that's a little easier low-hanging fruit i think as it were so we have of course your classic packaging which i've always been a good fan of good packaging sets a sets the experience for a good well it sets the tone for a good experience if you have a a premium product and it comes in flim flam packaging you're you know you, the experience is a i don't know about this but above the ties always had in my opinion classy um, packaging. It's not overdone, but it's done right. Good, robust box. And, you know, as, as we open it up, you have your card. And one of the latest additions, which I really liked, was there was a little envelope in it. And inside was a polishing cloth and those, uh, some people call them washers, whatever you want to call them, both rubber and nylon. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, I know more and more Razor manufacturers have been have been including them on the razor, but you're the first ones I've seen to include a few different ones uh, in the package. And I thought that was just a, a nice touch. Whose idea was that? Um, well, honestly, it just comes from customer 
feedback. I have mentioned that they would send a photo in, ask a question, and have the washer on it. So uh, two or three guys, this had happened, and one guy recommended that we maybe carry them. So we, we found, uh, first we found the rubber, it took a little time to track down the nylon, uh, but we've put it on every razor we've shipped out since, and then somebody complained that we didn't send enough, so <laughs> we added a few extras. In that's the box. awesome. Make sure everybody's happy. Yeah. Yeah, that, little, that's, go ahead, you know, please. Get it. Get them and just. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll talk a little bit. Well, we'll show you what the packaging looks like. Good, good foam. The razors are solidly in there. We'll pull out, pull out the X1, which is your latest um, slant. And as far as I know, the first ever Artist Club style slant razor. What was the inspiration behind that? Who thought of it? How did that come about? Well, um, I, th I think you and I are pretty similar in our, I prefer a more aggressive shaver. Um, so I'm a big slant fan. My SE that I use is, was a prototype. It's actually a little more aggressive than what we sell. And I wanted to bring those two together. Those are my two favorite shaves. The slant makes it efficient. The artist club makes it efficient. What does a slant artist club feel like? Um, so it was, it was a challenge. Um, we, I passed that off to Ray at the shop. And it took him about 18 months. Um, they, wow. busy. He, wasn't, he wasn't on it the whole time for 18 months. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised with the results. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to reduce the blade gap by uh, five, five hundredths, 0. 0.05 millimeters. And it still shaves as efficiently as my prototype, which I need to check. I think it's closer to a 0. 0.8. Um, but yeah. I, I, I shave my head with it, my beard with it, everything. I've enjoyed it um, so far. I didn't know exactly what to expect from it because, again, the Artist Club style razor is, is much longer or wider, I should say. And I was pleasantly um, surprised by how nice and smooth it was, and I've really enjoyed it um, so far. Yeah. I didn't see that coming, I have to admit, an Artist Club slant. So you're definitely the first one to, to do that, as far as I know. Are you aware of any other? I haven't found another one, so I believe so. I want to mention to the audience, if you do have questions, feel free to submit them. It looks like I have my question tab tonight, so feel free to shoot them in, and we'll get through them um, as time permits. Now, just the other night, you all announced your classic line is being discontinued. You're going to sell what you have, and then once those are gone, they're gone. Can you tell me the difference or sort of explain what the classic line is relative to this one, which, of course, is the Windsor? Uh, what are the differences and what can people expect in terms of that classic line being gone now? Or soon to be, I should say. So the classic line is the, the line that we refer to um, the very first razors that dad designed and rolled out with. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of been affectionately known as our classic line. Um, the original MR and H base plates, um, you know, the R1, M, you know, R1, R2, M1, M2, you know, the open comb, that type of thing. Um, so after that, then when, when did the Windsor come out? The Windsor came, so we, um, we had to go to another machine shop for aluminum because of anodizing and, um, they had a relationship with a company that does the polishing for Harley Davidson. And so I think that's where the Windsor came about, kind of moved that direction and the polishing on was moved. Um, so some differences. I guess sure. for one, the Windsor, it covers the entire um, width of the blade. For me, that's never been an issue. And, and I remember talking to Stan about it in the past. And I think one company even at times took shots about covering the tabs. And I, for me, it's never been an issue. But some people really do like the fact that the tabs are covered. And so the Windsor does address that, yes? Yes, and it's it's the tabs are just inside the edge. So you can still wrap your fingers around. And that's good. Yeah, get a hold of it. And are the holes in the bottom, is that a Windsor design or is that something else? That came with the Windsor, yeah. Okay. It was an aesthetic choice. Uh, we've had some people complain that it didn't rinse well. Rinse well, but, well you've kind of noticed that as well. Um, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it. I think it was more on the milder. Plates, wasn't it? That was the Could problem. Be. The smaller blade gaps. You know. Yeah, with the smaller blade gaps, like we like the round holes, but we, you know, with coming out with the new base plates, new Windsor base plates, the the SSMR and the SSRH. Uh, <laughs> I know it sounds like ship names, yeah. but um, 
we wanted to kind of redesign the ports a little bit just to make it easier to rinse and get all the lather and everything out just to improve the quality of the shave, just to make sure you don't have to like, you, you feel like you have to like really get in there you know, with the water and we just wanted it to make it a, a more positive experience. I think Stan mentioned like a Corvette or something like that was an inspiration. You'd see the, the way the tailpipes come out the end. Uh, okay. kind of... mm -hmm. I got to ask who's, Whose idea was it to do the sort of barber pole knurling on the, the Atlas? One of the things I've always liked to do with the Atlas is sort of put my fingers on it. And if you slide it down, it sort of spins on its own. I don't know if anybody else does that, but, you know, it kind of spins on its own because the knurling is, it's very comfortable, but it's, you know, it's grippy. And so I, I, I've always liked that knurling myself. Who came up with that? Uh, that was a stand design. Uh, the original... Razor was the Kronos handle, right? And then shortly after the Atlas uh, came out, that was a three inch. Yes. I do have a, a question from one of our YouTube uh, viewers, Judd, and he wants to know when you're planning on restocking. Particularly, he wants the uh, OpenComb H2. Now, I don't know which plate he's talking about, or whether they're in stock or not. But you can answer that as you will. Uh, so the H2 is part of our classic line. Uh, is being discontinued um if you don't mind me getting up and checking i can actually run and see if we have any uh h2s left in stock oh so it's I, fine it's whatever you'd like to do it's no big I, deal. yeah i will go check okay um we'll, we'll move on to an, another question while she's checking on that okay. he also wanted to know about aluminum um amir wanted to know specifically about aluminum i don't know if he's talking parts or full razor but he's interested in what's coming back in aluminum or when it's coming back right so we are at a sticking point the anodizing has become a problem mm. and so um i kind of looked around to see what other people were doing and i think the times guys are just doing clear uh, so we're we're exploring some other options uh, we hope to bring that back it's a very popular line uh, so right now, there's nothing coming on the aluminum front. Nothing's coming in at the moment. No. We're really worried. Yeah. Uh, What's so that? Have two H2s in stock, so. She said she's really, really working on it. Yes, we're no. really. On it. So I'd be remiss. Go ahead, please. Website, uh, if, if you'd like that H2, and we'll uh, set it set it back. Yeah, for, for real. Let me uh, remind all the viewers: it's a great time to do it. If you are going to buy something from above the tie, save yourself some money using discount code IMCDB. Um, if I'm not, again, I always have to caveat this because I don't try to sell anything to anybody. But if you're going to buy from above the tie, use it and save yourself some money. And uh, we appreciate above the tie from, for extending that discount to the viewers. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Ch Chad has a question. How was your now? I, I don't I, I don't really want to name the other manufacturer, but what makes your um, single edge razor different from the others? And and the other company that I mentioned has sort of a floating design. So just to give you an idea, it sort of floats in that particular razor. What makes your single edge razors, the Artist Club, in particular, different? You think? I'm not honestly. I haven't looked at the other ones. Um, I know that we early on looked at a shaved thread design to go, it reduces the size of the head, uh, but there's such a risk of cross-threading of that, uh, we decided not to go that direction. Um, I think, that's gotcha. um, all right, nope, no worries. We have a question here from uh, Diamond David Cowley here. And he wants to know, where do you see your brand in five years? That is an excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to the funds, Dave Cowley. Yeah, no, no. Um, we've actually, um, yeah, we've actually been talking about this quite a bit. Uh, we want to, yeah, after we discontinued the, uh, the classic line and the old Windsor line and we're coming out with the new base plates and, Eventually, want, we want to add more to you know, the open comb for the Windsor. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to bring back the aluminum uh, once we figure all that mess out. <laughs> um, I mean, honestly, we, we would really like to um, continue to keep growing, and we'd really like to grow our YouTube channel. We'd really like to grow our you know, online presence. Um, we just want to keep going until 
we just can't anymore. So, <laughs> till the kids can do it. Yeah, till the kids can do it. <laughs> I got to say, when I first came along, when I was looking at uh, the premium razors that I wanted, or at least the you know some of the ones that I discovered, Weber was one because they were making their seventy-five dollar all stainless razor. Uh, above the tie, Kronos R1 was the one I, I wanted. Um, and probably, I can't remember many others, but there was a handful of all stainless steel razor. Uh, Tredari was one uh, that I wanted. There weren't really that many stainless steel razor makers in the game at that point. There were just really only a handful. And you were, of course, one of those. And I remember getting that uh, above the tie R1 and thinking at the time that it was very, very efficient. And of course, now it doesn't feel, <laughs> it's yeah. still an efficient razor, but back then it was somewhat in intimidating. Um, but now, of course, it's not. And I remember when people used to grab the H, it used to be very menacing. And I think what happens to a lot of people is when they start out, everything feels menacing. And then as time goes on, you know, less so. But uh, above the top was definitely one of the first premium razors that I bought myself. And uh, I've always enjoyed using the razors that they just always got the job done. I think in recent years, you know, so many razor makers have come along and people like to try different things. So sometimes it gets lost in the shuffle, but it was really nice for me to hear that you all are still, you know, plugging along and still, you know, making brand new razors like the, the X1 here. When I, I actually saw this, I think on uh, John Latherhog's channel on YouTube. Yeah. I didn't even know about it. And I was like, hmm, I'm going to have to try that. That seems like a <laughs> a nice razor. And so I'm I'm glad you all are still around because, uh, you know, there's been a lot of people have came and gone in the time that you all have been around. When do you, did you all start, by the way? Uh, well, thank you for that. And then um, welcome. Um, a lot of that's due to Stan's credit. Um, he ran a cash business, no debt, low overhead. And so we're in it for the long game. Yeah, we still try to continue to do a cash only business and yeah. not have any debt or business debt, anything like that. We have a question from the Shaving Disciple. Any plans to bring back an all copper version? That is a handsome razor, all copper. I was thinking about copper today, and the hang up is the sealant. Yeah. So I want to see the potential of an unsealed copper and what that might look like. And uh, like with the bronze, you know, you just let it tarnish if you want. If you want to shiny, polish it up. I think there might be something there. Uh, no promises, but... Um, yeah, we do have a 10-year anniversary coming up for Above the Time. Was it November? Mm -hmm. So November is our 10-year anniversary for the company. Awesome. We've been uh, throwing around some ideas of, mm, you know. Now, the, the copper was an actual... It, it was a, a limited run. There was only 100 uh, seven-piece... Was it a seven-piece set? Mm -hmm. Five-piece. Five you're thinking of the bronze. I was, yeah, I was thinking of bronze. My, side. My bad. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the it's copper hard to was, keep the metal straight. It does. Yes, it is. But the, the copper was a limited run. It was never like in production extensively. So, mm -hmm. all I have left over now is from, how, what was it, six, 2016? About 2000, yeah, about 2016. Um, so, that's all that we have left from that initial run. Um, so it was kind of a limited edition thing like like the bronze uh, set that we did also. But I tell you, people love the copper. It's gorgeous. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's a good looking it, copper metal. Looks cool. I'm a sucker for it. Mm -hmm. um, the mixed metal, um, yeah. like with, with the polishing and stuff looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, we've done with it, with the aluminum Windsor Pro. Um, I don't know if you've seen any of those pictures that I've uh, posted on social media, black but with, like the black, that super black, black um, aluminum with the uh, the copper base plate in the middle. Oh, yeah. it's just, it looks so good. Yeah. And it's one that's kind of play around with. Um, actually, our uh, I have to give a shout out to our employee, Amanda. She is watching. Mm -hmm. I saw her a minute ago saying that uh, we did have two uh, H2 base plates in stock. She's on the job. Uh, yeah. She is, yes. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, she has been fantastic. Everybody who's been dealing uh, with the customer service, she's our operations manager. Mm -hmm. um, they just she's much better at it than I am. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. uh, but she actually started playing around with some of the mixed metal finishes and base plates and things too. Um, awesome. Yeah, we have a question. I'm sorry, please. So yay! <laughs> oh, good. I have a question from I. I can't say the name, but I've got it on the screen. Um, 
I'm just going to call him Mr. F. Any chance of having a base plate more aggressive than the SSH1? Mm. Interesting. So I talked to a few guys who were shimming their razors. And uh, so I started playing around with that. And it's, it's a pretty neat way to just tweak a little bit if you need a little bit more. So um, I took an H1, my bronze H1, and I cranked it up <laughs> as high as I could get it. And it was really nice. It was a really good shaver. Um, the way we the way we look at the production is kind of a bell curve and, and something mm -hmm. so far outlying. I don't think we can right. make it much more aggressive. Yeah. So. Seth, one of the viewers asked, do you intend to make a Windsor slant? Yes. Yes. <laughs> there you go, Seth. That's the answer. Thank you, Seth, for the question. We appreciate yeah. it. A little less blade exposure on a slant. I'm really excited about that too. So, so we have decided if we wanted to uh, get rid of our classic slant and replace it with the new Windsor setter if we wanted to keep both of them. See how it we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll see how it performs, see the difference. Um, but that's definitely in the works, as well as open combs for the Windsor, the new Windsor base plates. Uh, we're definitely interested in expanding um, our Windsor Pro lines, like with more base plates, like with Very the nice. same yeah. uh, no. combs for those as well. Um, Mel but, says hello from Pensacola. Pensacola, Florida, if you did not know. Mom, mom's in New Smyrna. Yeah, his mom is taking a, an art class uh, down there. Yeah. Oh, nice. In those beach pictures. Yeah. <laughs> but she, she, she's been part of the for a lot of years, too. Yeah. She was you know, packing orders and things like that. And, yeah. So it's, it's funny you just talked about copper because Steve had asked, uh, will you bring back the copper? So there seems to be interest in copper. There's a lot of interest in copper. Blade, um, I mean, it's pe – people are getting more into it, and especially, like, with the, the more, like, artisan sort of looking and mm -hmm. I, I would be curious to see, like you said, having a, a non-coated yeah, non copper. That was really the hang-up because if you coat it and, you know, you have blemishes, you basically lost the piece. So. Mm -hmm. I understand. So we have a question. Let's see, from the Canadian Mafia show. <laughs> Uh, well, and of course, they want to know which razor would be best for shaving uh, those nether regions. And I don't, I don't know about safety razor wise. That that would be uh, mighty dangerous for some folk, I would imagine. <laughs> um. Well, from a lady's perspective, shaving your bikini line. Let's let's face it, ladies, we got to get ready for summer. Um, I use the uh, actually the Windsor Pro Aluminum, uh, and oh. it it does great. So, okay. awesome. I like X1, uh, but I mean, everybody's different, so I'm not sure. I guess it just depends. Start, start on. mild. Yeah, start easy. <laughs> you, don't, you don't want anything down there, so. <laughs> now, this is a funny question from, uh, from Mel. I don't know if Mel's, which show he's watching, but he wants to know which, fa which, which is your favorite timeless razor when you shave the dome, and of course, you're from the, by the time. However, Timeless is an awesome company, too. They're yeah. great people at Timeless. We met them at Maggard's. Uh, great guys. They sent yeah, us. Yeah, they are. I don't know if it was a rate. I think it was just an individual razor to try out. Very smooth. I don't remember shaving my head with it, but um, but I was impressed with the work those guys were doing up there. Yeah. So, Mel, this is the Bud the Tie and not Timeless, <laughs> just so you know. That's okay. <laughs> but they're great people at Timeless. I love Timeless, too. Um, what's your best selling? product if you had to take a guess at it like of all the razors uh, presumably it's going to be a razor obviously but, i know you sell other things but right the sc1 and the s1 those okay are, mel is but, mel, mel is clarifying now and, <laughs> and saying he meant above the top <laughs> not this, timeless um yeah we got i mean one of the big ones and the driving force of us retiring the classic lawn is the Windsor sale. I mean, just the Windsor. I mean, people seem to gravitate towards it more. Mm -hmm. and, more of a fine look. It's. Uh, and by the way, that was just, we just had what we call a male moment. Sometimes male situational awareness is not where it should be. He's a nurse. He works very long hours and sometimes, you know, male, I, but male's also. a terrific guy. We love male. Um, <laughs> For his question, ahead. and I love it. My favorite head shaver so far. The X1? It's wide. It covers covers a lot of area. 
Yeah, I watch him shave his head with it, and I mean, it. Oh, I told you and me, like it freaks yeah. me out. It goes so fast. I'm like, <laughs> but, <laughs> what I mean, product are you most proud of in your line? I, and I know you're proud of everything, but there has to be one that's like, you know, I'm really proud of that. <laughs> that's a really good question. Well, I hate but the X one's really my first concept. So everything else was kind of but the razor that really got me into it was the S1. Um, and I'm not sure. Is anybody else making slants? Uh, yeah, there's there's still slants being made, but I don't know if there's been a lot of new slants being produced as of yeah. late. It seems like seven, eight years ago, slants were extremely hot, okay. um, maybe even six to eight years ago. And that, recent years, um, they've, I wouldn't say fallen out of favor, but not as many people are producing them, or at least not that I see anymore. But I, I, I still like them, think they're terrific. I don't, I don't, like, it's kind of just go, go, go. So we don't have time to think. think yeah. We don't, yeah. I, no, I, I do um, a lot of the vintage stuff uh, on the site. Mm -hmm. well, I will say that that is still very much a part of the company. Mm -hmm. yeah. Matt had to test at me when I, we were, I was kind of relearning the vintage stuff. He's like, leave that man alone. Quit, quit bothering him all the time. But um, he doesn't let us get too far out of line. No, yeah, we we run all the stuff by him. You know, he tests mm -hmm. everything. Um, you know, he, you know, we still ask his advice about that. He, Any he, thoughts? I'm sorry, I cut. When there's a gap, I just cut right in. I apologize. Continue, please. Oh, well, I was just gonna say, you know, with him helping me with the vintage and stuff, um, I've actually. I've actually gone, gotten really fond of a lot of the vintage stuff that we've been working with. Um, I will uh, take this opportunity to drop a little uh, sneak preview. Okay. I have given myself a hold of a nice uh, 1905 Gillette double ring in a case mm -hmm. with the uh, the little original cardboard uh, blade holders. So I'm very nice. We will be working on getting that to the site soon. We might or might not have a couple toggles laying around. I don't know. <laughs> the so, vintage people pay attention. Right, that's right. So we we do our best to incorporate everything. Um, but yeah, that's he he's taught me pretty much everything he knows about vintage and awesome. I, I might have had to bribe him a little bit with a replated fat boy and I'm like dad. <laughs> here's your a few dinners here and there. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I made in some chicken enchiladas, so, you know, yep. it's all good. There you go. Will you consider making a titanium razor at any time? I know we talked about this a little over email, but the folks are going to ask, they're going to want to know. I know that titanium is certainly more expensive to manufacture, but people like it. It's that really nice middle ground between stainless steel and aluminum. We, we took a few steps down that road and it just was a bad timing for trying to get quotes and, uh, material costs like they are. Yeah. So um, nothing's in the works right now, but never say. Tell me about the pro line. I know that was one of the things where some people sort of balked at that. And, and now understanding that you all have uh, very, very clear um, charts and so on on your website about what is made where and what materials it's made. You even have a really good, um, chart with blade gaps and stuff that uh, has many, many different manufacturers on it, which is really excellent. I would encourage people to go to your website just to sort of look through some of the things, but uh, the decision to, to go pro, uh, what does that give you? And, and why do you, why, what do you think it gives the customer? So we were kind of having our aluminum issues. And so basically just kind of exploring options is how that came about. And we got the prototype and tried it and we let Stan try it. And he's like, that's the best shaving razor we've ever made. So we decided to pursue it and we expected some blowback. Um, yeah. Maybe not as much as we received, um, but um, so just subtle little tweaks ended up in the design. Um, it, it brings back the seam, has a little more blade exposure. We're covering the blade tabs. Um, we brought back the big rinse ports. 
Um, I think some people were confused yeah. because they were like, well, I don't like AT&T anymore because they're making the razors in China. And I said, no, 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 they're not making all the razors in China. You know, Which they have, oh. <laughs> please go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's very clear about that. Right. But it, it seems like sometimes people just focus on a little piece of information and are like, oh, they're being made in China now. And so yeah. it, it's, it's an addition to your lineup that is um, cost appropriate for what it is, correct? Right, so we were able to bring those in at a lower price point. Um, it's you know, it's still a great shave. Oh yeah. Um, I, we haven't finalized our plans yet, but uh, we hope to start donating a portion of the profits from the Windsor Crow uh, to help mental health organizations. Oh, that's, a, that's very awesome. I think it's actually awareness month in May, isn't it? Is it? I think so. I think I saw that on Facebook. Don't quote me on that if I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, wow. Art's uh, shooting from the hip here. He's like, will you guys design an artist club shavette? Oh, that, that's an interesting question. Thanks, Art, for the question. Uh, nothing's in the works for Thanks, that. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I know when we went to, when we came out with the SE1, that was kind of up in the air. And so um, I don't think we have any plans for that right now. No, uh, we do hope to... Um start you know broadening our marketing uh, we'd like to we'd love to see more women get involved um like i said i mean i i use the razor uh manda uses the razor um his mom and sister use i mean you know we, we know people who use them and they really seem to like them um and i mean ladies let me tell you your legs stay smoother longer i'm just saying but uh yeah so we hope to include that and try to broaden our yeah, our customer base. So Hidman 27 asks, are the lather port holes on the current Windsor gone for good? I really dig the style. And that that's sort of what you get into with those changes is some people love them, some people won't. It's it's kind of yeah. darn if you do, darn if you don't. Yeah, um, we really like the round holes too. We might not guarantee they're gone for good. They might reappear in maybe a limited run or something. But like we said earlier, we were we were more concerned about you know people being able to rinse the razor yeah. properly and getting a better shave and just you know having a better overall experience. Um, but yeah, we we like the holes that they they might come back at some point. I don't know. You sell um, vintage razors a lot, which you were just referencing. Are you all doing the replating and refurbishing yourself, or how does that work? So with the vintage, um, what we do is, you know, I'll, I'll find the vintage razor if it needs to be, if it needs to be replaced. We actually send it to um, Chris Spencer. He uh, operates Backroads Gold. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're actually working on setting up a link on our site to his site. Yeah. Um, we recommend him to everybody who has already had vintage, you know, and they want, they reach out to us to see if we can replace it. Yeah. Uh, but that's where we sell our stuff. That's where we refer all of our customers. Mm -hmm. um, you see his name get kicked around a lot on Badger and Blade. All positive things. Uh, he's a joy to work with. Yeah. So he, he does our replating for us. Now with the refurbishing, that is something that um, I try to do myself. Um, I'll, you know, of course, sanitize the razors and clean them really good. You know, pol you know polish them with polishing cloths if I can. Um, with the cases, I do what I can to repair them, to, you know, remove old whisker hair from from the <laughs> stuff that's inside it. Uh, so, you know, uh, we do everything in-house that we can, uh, but with the replating, we, we definitely send it over to Chris at Backroads Gold. Kim and Aaron want to know what gear is in your rotation? Like, what are you using on a daily basis the most? Um, I have an old uh, brush envy from uh, Big Shave, uh, Big Shave West or Southwest, and then um, I'm using some Sterling soap right now. I just saw you uh, cover. There you it. go. It's good stuff. Yeah, I emailed Rob a while back, and he recommended Executive Man, and so I've been enjoying that. And um, right now I'm, I'm on the X1, and then I have a bronze H1. I kind of go back and forth. And then finish up with a Captain's Choice 45th Parallel. Uh, after shave. Which is also equally nice on your legs after you shave. Just throwing that out there too. So what are you using, Mariah? 
Um, actually, actually, the last time I shaved, I used Matt's uh, Sterling uh, Sterling Shave Soap. Uh, Matt made me a, a handmade brush of maple, so that. Um, I had the Aluminum Windsor Pro, and then I finished with the uh, the 45th Parallel from Captain Choice Aftershave Balm, which smells uh, amazing. Scott at Captain Choice, a very very nice guy. I really like him a lot. He's one of those guys that just. Um, I've talked to him on the phone a couple of times. Just a super nice guy. We had a, a lunch with him when we were at the mission, and he he was looking at me and he said, "You look like Chris Bailey." There <laughs> <laughs> and being like, "I am." <laughs> we're both bald, that's for sure. <laughs> um, do you have a product in your lineup that you feel is underappreciated? Like you, you you just feel like, man, this thing should be selling more because this is awesome. Of course, you probably feel that way about everything you have, but if you had to pick one. The Windsor Pro for me. Yeah. Here's a comment, by the way, you might be interested in. It said, I'm going to call it like I said. Stan deserves a Nobel Pierce Prize. Best <laughs> racers ever. <laughs> so I'm well, sorry. Go ahead. Back to the question. I, I, I had to point that out. No, I like that. He wanted to tune into the live thing, but he said they have the kids. And then when I explained to him that he actually had to download Instagram on his phone, his eyes got real big. And he's like, I'll just watch it when he puts it on YouTube tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will put it on YouTube. And hello, uh, Stan, when you're watching this, you're you're a miss. But I can see the company's in good hands. So you're not missed too much, Stan. So keep enjoying yeah. your retirement. Uh, we have some other questions here. Let's see. They would like to know, Canadian Mafia Show, what blade works well with your razors? And that's a loaded question because, you know, it's subjective. But what do you like when you're using them? We ship everything with uh, Aster, Aster Greens. Mm -hmm. um, so good all around. It's a good middle of the road blade, yeah. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm a big Feather fan. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so I'll go between those two. And I'll try new blades here and there as, as people recommend them. And then... Uh, I shake Proline guy for the Artist Club. I love those things. Anything in particular for you, Mariah? I use whatever is handy. <laughs> Probably Astros. But mostly, yeah, mostly Astros because those are usually kind of what we have laying around. If I've tried any other blades, <laughs> it's probably not to my knowledge. It's just been something Excellent. I've, yeah, just something I've grabbed. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I tend to rush when I, when I do. Uh, do that so so what does your development process look like and I, i'm obviously i'm not asking you to reveal trade secrets or anything like that but when you're conceptualizing a razor to when you finally get it up on the website roughly what does that process entail are you making drawings uh and then going to 3d printing i mean how does this process unfold um yeah, we, we haven't done a lot of 3D printing. Uh, we did on our razor handles, but most start with a sketch and we'll take that into CAD and uh, get it usually pretty close to mm -hmm. the final design and we'll run our prototypes in aluminum. We'll test them and then if there's there, we'll run. So it's, if our, if our guys aren't covered up <laughs> with the work, we, we can usually turn it around pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, who does the testing? I'm sure you all are testing, but are you throwing the razor over to Stan and going, hey, what do you think? Yeah, yeah our whole family is pretty much our guinea pigs. <laughs> yeah. uh, dad, um, his mom, uh, his stepdad, uh, we, we're like, here, shave your face with this. See if it, see if it takes the skin off, you know. <laughs> they're, they're always good sports and willing to, to try. And, and they're very honest with their feedback, so. Yeah. Um, Yes, but which is we can't, you know, produce good products if they're like, oh, it's great. Well, you, you said that about everything. Well, every every beard's different. I always come back to this, and I think that's why there's so many great razor makers out there. Is no one razor is going to be for everybody. Mm -hmm. so that's true. If I make something that I love, it's very important to get as much feedback as we can mm -hmm. to make sure other people agree. Oh yeah. We've Tell me a little bit. Go ahead, please. I'm sorry. No, I said we, we value our customer feedback. Uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for that. Tell me about your 90-day test drive, which is uh, – there are some companies uh, – I think Timeless does something similar, but I know um, – I can remember years ago 
you know, I'd get a plate and didn't like it. And I, you know, send it back and what do you need? And Stan would send another one. So, um, you know, what is, what does that 90 day test, test drive policy entail? Um, so it was a 30 and there was just too many questions with international. So I'm just, I just extended it out to 90, make sure everybody has a fair chance to run it through the paces. Um, but uh, we, have, we don't currently have a restocking fee because we haven't had to do that. So you purchase a razor, usually you'll get free domestic shipping. So we'll ship it to you. If, if you don't, if it's not for you, that's okay. You can send it back and we'll refund your purchase price. If your razor is too mild, too aggressive, we can adjust your plates a little bit and get you dialed in a little better. Um, so we usually do one exchange like that. Um, yeah, that's what we used to call standing behind your product. You know, um, when you say, hey, you don't like it, send it back or we'll, you know, adjust yeah. that plate. That that was always a good service, I thought, that was uh, not too many people do that. There are some that do it, but certainly not everybody. And some companies don't accept any kind of returns at all. And so once you buy it, I remember I bought razors in the past from a company and it says very clearly, no returns whatsoever, no matter what. So. You know, I think that's a that's a really nice service. And I'm certainly glad that you guys offer that. Well, thank you. Uh, Kim asks, what razor do you recommend for leg shaving? So I'm assuming, Matt, that you're not shaving your legs. But if you are, then you yes. can recommend one, too. <laughs> um, so like I said, I, I like the Windsor Pro Aluminum. Um, it's, it's lightweight, so it actually has sort of a feel of a cartridge razor. So it's not overly heavy. Um, so that, that's my personal choice. That's what I like. You started with the M1 then? When yeah. You first started? Yeah, I did start with the M1. It did, it, I felt like, um, I don't feel like I have overly like coarse hair or anything like that, but I felt like the M1 was a little too mild. Um, so I, when we when the Winter Pro came in, I was like, well, I'll give it a whirl. And I was like, oh, gosh, I love it. Um, I don't remember what I got a hold of once, but it was an open comb something and I wasn't paying attention and it did not end well. Um, I still have <laughs> my leg from that. But, uh, but no, I, I like that. Um, I, I haven't had any trouble like around my knees. You know, I, I shave my armpits with it. Um, it. It does really well. It's, it's, it's very forgiving, at least I, I feel like it is. Um, and with the, uh, the Kronos handle, I'm sorry, not the Kronos, the Calypso handle that's on it. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel it does a really good job of not slipping because yeah. with ladies in the shower, uh, you, you guys, you, you hold your razor up like this. So when we hold our razor, we're holding it like this. So right. it's too slick, especially with the weight of some of the stainless steel. It, I find it kind of slipping. It, it slips through my grip. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that knurling is actually really nice for me because I feel like I'm not going to drop the razor and slice something open on its way down or you know it uh, a full uh, so, oh yeah matt's actually going to go get our uh, our ladies razor that we have the eon um it's a really pretty blue uh, i did I, see that it is a good looking blue i like that i did start with that is the one i started with and like i said i, I did feel like it was a little too mild for uh, for my personal preference um although we've had a lot of people really like it um, most I, I like a, a, a slightly more aggressive, uh, aggressive feel. Like you can definitely feel the blade uh, with the Windsor Pro and stuff, which I like. Uh, but um, but yeah, and, and the Eon actually has a longer handle because you know we, we got to reach all the way down to our ankles and right, you know, come all the way up and so uh, you know, given the chance, I'm sorry, the, okay. above the tie, it is. Uh, we're on with above the tie. Someone was asking. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, yeah, Matt's bringing one over. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. I, I like the knurling on it and everything. I felt like it had a good grip. So here's the, here's our Eon. Yeah, that's a good looking blue. So there you go, Kim Gray. There, there's a, there's a razor for you. Looks pretty good. I like to look at that. Good place to start. A very good uh, razor to learn with because uh, this is actually very forgiving as well. As far as you know, you're you're not gonna like shave your leg off or something. What product or service do you all offer that people just don't know about? Like it's just sort of under the radar and they're like, I don't know why no one's taking advantage of this. <laughs> we dabbled in laser engraving and I haven't got, quite got it where I want it to go uh, in full production, but 
um, getting some interesting results. Um, yeah. Doing um, lasering on ceramics on top of the cap and then etching away the anodizing on the aluminum. Yeah, Anything, we, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. This is, we, were, we were wanting to get a, a more powerful laser uh, so it actually can do the etching in the stainless because that's what the, some of the problems you were having. Yeah, not hot enough. But uh, we had some really cool designs. <laughs> so we, that's definitely something we want to bring back and really. Well, and, and that was because some customers, uh, when we removed the year on our base plates, they missed that year and, and their son would be born in the year. And I want, I want mm. that. And so we've been able to do a little bit, some initials here and there in those instances. Sure. Um, yeah, that, that's an interesting, uh, so the, the potential there to maybe personalize a razor or something as a service. Yeah, that, that would be, I'm sure some people would appreciate that for sure. Anything else coming up or um, anything you're excited about? I know you're not going to disclose all your plans, but uh, <laughs> I know we, we, we've talked about titanium. We've talked about copper. Um, I, I do know that people tend to like different metals. They like those options and mixing and matching. And so anything else in the near future that you're ready to talk about yet or everything's just still right now on the down low? Yeah, we're mainly trying to get our aluminum back up to mm -hmm. where we were. And um, we're streamlining the stainless just, you know, for COVID, just trying to um, cut down on what sits on the shelf. Yeah, and, you know, cut down on our overhead, what we have to uh, constantly think about restocking. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we just want to streamline it and just... For the long, long run. Yeah, yeah. For, the, for the long run, yeah. Anything else you'd like to let your customers know about or viewers, customers, um, prospective customers, I guess, before we close it out this evening. Um, you can visit us at above the tie .com. Uh, Drop a, a message in there uh, if you have any questions. Any uh, questions about which razor to get, we can get you dialed in. Uh, you tell us what you're using now. It's your beard coarse, medium, or fair, and, and we can get you really close. Um, yeah. Um we're we're still here. We're we're in it for the long haul. Um, we uh, we still want to continue to make good quality stuff. Um, you know, because we, I guess with us, like we're you know we don't particularly care much where things come from. We just want it to be good quality. We want it to last. We want that, you know, that sort of that heirloom quality that you, you can pass down to your kids. You know, mm -hmm. there's some razors that I'm sure you know we'll pass down to Mason. That's our that's our son. Um, of course, Mia too, our daughter. She she'll want one too. She'll, uh, yeah, she'll want one too. <laughs> if brother has one, she's gonna want one. Um, but yeah, we just we we want to you know, we just you know we want to appeal to to everybody and yeah. you know we're a good you know, family run business and I think yeah, we have I think I I think people are definitely going to get the idea that this is truly a, a family run business in in every sense of the word. Just just folks trying to make a decent product. And, and I will say one of the things that people might not be aware of is the standard price for above the tie used to be 185. You can now find razors for under that. And we're talking about still USA made razors. They're one of the few companies who drops their prices these days, almost no one. So it's yeah. one of those things when I was looking, I was like, wow, that's less even than it used to be eight years ago. Um, and so I, I certainly appreciate that. And the fact that you're, you know, trying to, to understand that, you know, Hey, $185, $200 plus is a lot of money for people to, uh, to spend. Of course, these are premium razors when you're talking about all stainless and the, the different metals. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised when I went and looked and I was like, wow, these are less than they used to be. And I'm like, Hey, that's great. I'm always for that. So I thank you for that. And I'm uh, super happy that you're still around. I'm glad uh, we had a chance to, to talk. Any final words you'd like to pass on before we wrap it up? <laughs> well, I, don't, I, I really actually enjoyed working with the company. Um, I, I kind of came more to the forefront here recently. I begged her to help me. <laughs> <laughs> All he would have had to have done was ask in the first place, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I feel like 
there's been a lot of a learning curve for me. Um, my background is all medical. I, I do mammograms. Um, so business stuff is like, yeah. no, so what now? What do you mean I have to write an email, you know? Um, I think I actually expressed my concern. She's like, I don't know how to do an Instagram chat live. <laughs> Hey, so, there you have, you've done it, so. <laughs> but it's just, I've, I've really enjoyed it, though. Like, I've kind of been in, I've been more in the background um, through the whole thing. So, you know, I'm familiar with stuff, but I just, I feel like it's been a really good opportunity for me to come and learn and interact with our customers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm, re I'm really enjoying it a lot. I think we get, we get more and more emails from customers that are just blown away. They're so happy. They and that's that's what keeps us going. And you, there'll be people in in the house here cheering when an email comes in. You know, you're like, yay! So we we enjoy it, and you know, I just want everybody to know that we appreciate them. We're trying hard, and mm -hmm. if you need anything from us, let us know. Yeah, we're we're here to stay. So, well, I'll say once again for anybody who's considering above the tie, if you want to buy one, make sure to use the discount code. Save yourself some money. There's no reason not to. I am CDB, and I thank Above the Tie again. I'm so happy you're still around. I hope 10 years from now you're still around, and we'll celebrate your 20th uh, anniversary. Classy products, classy people, and I, I'm, I'm very happy that you came on, and I hope we'll do this again uh, at some point in the future when you've got something exciting to announce. Thank you both. I really appreciate you, and thank you to all the viewers. Thanks so much. I want to say thanks once again, and God bless to everybody. We'll see you guys next time. Right. Bye. Bye.